Fuck yeah. You even get the pre show. Yo, 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 yo. Got a gaming thing at 1030. Fuck yeah, we'll be long gone before then. Earl Skakel in the house. Just got back from yoga. It better be legit. With what I paid for it. Actually, it wasn't that much, to be honest with you. I gotta get my water. I'm a little thirsty. I'm a little thirsty. Put that up over there. There we go. It's been a minute. Been a minute. But I don't have to do this 35 times a week to make some money, honey. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, we're a small stream here. In the Earl verse, we're a very small stream, but that's okay. I'm not in competition with anybody. I'm just a happy streaming soldier. We have nothing of importance to talk about. We can talk about anything in this stream, except for you know what. We don't talk about that anymore. No, I just got back from yoga. And I know I'm going to offend people <clears throat> with what I'm about to do next. <coughs> But I can't help it. I did see Tracy on MLC. You know, I don't... That's why I don't go on these streams anymore. And it's horrible to eat on camera, but I'm going to do this as covertly as I can. But, you know, like all these fucking losers calling her fat and stuff. Fuck that. That's why I don't go on anyone's stream anymore. <sighs> Want to call me fat or old or ugly? Yeah, you no, know, I don't like to eat on camera. <clears throat> but, uh, you know. If you want to say something to me, say it to my face. I'll be at the comedy store Saturday night. I'll let you in for free. Let's see how tough you are then, you pussies.
Yeah, if you say it to my face, you know, you don't have to super chat me anymore. There we go. Sorry, the light from the TV was coming in hot. You know, Sting is covering up uh, Barry Jelly. We might have to move Sting maybe to a, maybe right there. Sting's tired. He's 64. There we go. They can't really see it. You know, we're just going to move Sting out of the way here for now. We'll find a better place for Sting. <clears throat> there we go. Take my shirt down. Sorry. I thought I was going to shower at yoga, but I didn't want to be late for the stream. That's how much I care about the fans. No stream sniping here. We're going to go to 8.30 Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I mean, I don't smell great. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Definitely, I, I definitely uh, could use a shower, but I'll do that after. And, uh, you know, we'll take it from there. You know, we can talk AEW wrestling. We can talk hockey. Wild game last night between the Kings and the Minnesota Wild. My favorite King, Pierre-Luc Dubois, just causing a ruckus at the end of the game. And uh, we can talk about that. But I don't know how many of the five of you want to talk puck. And, uh, you know, of course, Sunday night will be my flagship stream. I got to get back to streaming with regularity. But I was, what up, Ross? I was in uh, Austin, Texas last week. Home of the mothership. So I uh, had a good time there. And, uh, you know, now I'm back to the grind of Los Angeles comedy. But I did do a recap of my trip at the mothership, if you have not heard it. Please check it out. S switching over to the mics. Damn, Dr. Nova, you are... Dr. Nova, I think you are a double agent, to be honest with you. I think you are Peter Brennan on another account. No one would bring up Jimmy Pitt and Mickey, even Chris P. Chicken. We have a saboteur in our stream. Well, you know, I get it though, ACDC. You know, it's easy for us to sit there and say, oh, he should say this word or that word, but I'm sure Bud Light's paying him a pretty chunk of change. And, you know, at some point we all sell out in comedy. It's kind of different, but, you know, I didn't really want to do roast battle. I didn't want to call someone fat or, you know, gay or, you know, whatever. But, you know, at the time I was 14, 15 years in with no TV credits. So I sold out. Now I paid the price for selling out, as you guys know. But, uh, you know, I think uh, I don't know if he's a safe comic i would say he's a smart comic you know we all sell out at some point i don't know dr nova you you drop the same kind of references that the chicken man does hey aren't you tom drake friend of the community didn't you fuck mary kleinman oh yeah was she a hose beast mary kleinman's my sister did you say kleinman or mosley because mary kleinman's a terrific girl 
Dr. Nova, I've got my eye on you. I'm just kidding. That's the great thing about these streams and Twitter. And, and, you know, you don't know who the hell you're talking to. You don't know if half the time you're getting trolled or someone's a fan. Let me make a quick tweet. Get some heads in here. You know, I don't have an Adam Henniker, a, a Jamie, so I've got to do all this promotional stuff on my own. And I don't mind it. I'm a one-man soldier. Just wafting through the, the negativity of the internet. But that's okay. I don't mind it. I'm a soldier. Let me put my right name on. I just misspelled my own name. Welcome to Hollywood, baby. I've got Visa. I've got Master Charge. Check it out. Oh, you're doing a RoboCop reference. Bobby, can you fly? I mean, that was crazy. I mean, I don't. That kind of falls into the Dabbleverse uh, stuff, ACDC. But since you're a longtime contributor, I'll let you slide. Uh, I mean, that's wild if it's true. But that's the thing with the Dabbleverse. You don't know. I mean, I don't think that. I don't think he faked that. But, uh, you know, who knows? Oh, Dr. Nova doing some Boone Shakalaka material. No, we can talk about it, ACDC. I just, that world's been really depressing lately, man. Like, you know, I mean, I, I was watching my friend Tracy on MLC and they're calling her fat and a whore. And it's like, who would sign up for that? Like, I know she's getting paid by Kevin, but there ain't enough money in the world to get people to say that shit to me on a stream. I don't care what you're paying. But, you know, but I get why it's popular. But I do think that the, uh, you know, that world is starting to implode. And I know I always say that, but, you know, it just gets old, you know. It's, and now they all snipe each other. And that's why I don't go on anyone's show anymore, because then I get roped into it. So um, I'm good on that real good on that i swear to god i'd rather have 10 people in a stream right now we're all talking hockey and wrestling and whatnot uh wait speaking of wrestling didn't someone just ask me what i thought of dynamite who who thought that uh nick then um i liked it you know i mean mercedes monet uh her promo was a little, uh, she stuttered a few times, so I thought that was interesting. Um, you know, she, and she's never been great on the mic, and I don't like her as a baby face. She's got to be a heel. That's where the money, honey, is. Um, so I, I would, I mean, it's not too late to pair her with a manager, but, you know, I would, she's not great on the mic. Um, but she's the best women's wrestler on earth. So, you know, I did like how they kind of explained her, um, you know, relation, relationship with Willow Nightingale. Cause I was at that match in Long Beach for New Japan where Willow won the championship. Uh, Mercedes broke her ankle in that match. Now, I don't know if that was the planned finish, Willow going over, but, uh, you know, uh, so there's a storyline there, but you know that I did like how they kind of brought that into the promo and storyline. You know, you have to, you know, a lot of people don't watch New Japan and even fewer go to it. You know, like I didn't even know about the show until, you know, my former uh, co host of the Comedy Store Wrestling podcast was like, hey, I'm going to uh, Long Beach at the uh, Pyramid to watch New Japan. Do you want to go? And I mean, Will Ospreay was there. I think Okada was there too. I mean, it was, a, I mean, they must have lost a lot of money on this show because it was probably 60% full. 
And with all those guys being flown in, I mean, I can't imagine Osprey and Okada flying coach. So, uh, you know, it, it was a uh, awesome Matt Rocky Romero, a lot, a lot of uh, people who can, uh, Zach Saber, uh, a lot of people, um, kind of uh, who dabble, pardon the word, in AEW, Ring of Honor, New Japan were there. So it was a fun show to watch because um, New Japan shows are almost kind of like. They're pretty real. Like it, it's like almost shoot um, fighting to a degree, you know, which is essentially you know real wrestling. Um, so uh, I enjoyed it. But so you know, Dynamite was good. I, I love the way they're bringing in Okada. Kind of, you know, he he's not. I don't think he can speak a lot of English. So it's definitely a smart move to pair him with the Bucks, who can do most of the promos. But I think he spoke a little bit English last night. But he's kind of like the Asian Ric Flair. You know, they had him show. They showed up, or he showed up pulling up in a Ferrari, and uh, I like that. And you know, he's in a nice suit. Uh, yeah, you got that right, Doctor Nova. Um, and if you want to see the Hog in person, it's this Saturday night in the main room. At the world famous comedy store, twelve fifteen. But because everyone runs the lights, I'll literally probably go on closer to one. So um, enjoy that if you are a local, and I believe it is a membership perk. Um, and the Earl Stick Earl Skakel YouTube streamy. So I will show you all around the comedy store and all the good stuff. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, the comedy store, if you drive by it, it doesn't look like it's that big of a building. But it's uh, not. Uh, it's big. Like, there's three rooms. There's a whole upstairs that virtually nobody gets to go up to. But, you know, if you're a... Uh, Bonzo Barry member, or hell, the one of the rare Patreon subscribers. Uh, I'll uh, take you upstairs. Um, oh, it's awesome in person. Um, uh, no, nah. uh, I, I did like it though, uh, Austin. Yes, the Earl Army is a small army, but we're soldiers. You know, I'm not doing this for money or, you know, I'm not doing four and five hour streams. I just can't do that, man. You know, and there's plenty of ways for you guys to help me without um, contributing financially. You know, just watching the videos, you know, and uh, stuff like that, you know, retweeting. You know, if I say, hey, I'm going live. You know, now I don't dabble, pardon the pun, in the Discord world. I don't even know what that is, to be honest with you. I can barely keep up with YouTube. I'm not going to go into a a dark web uh, of the Discord. So, um, you know, now I am going to try and stream at the same time every day. So you guys can go, hey, it's four o'clock. I did wear leather in Austin. Joe Rogan looked at me like, what the fuck? But he gave me a big, big hug. Yes, please, Dr. Nova, anytime. Uh, now, apparently in the summer, Austin gets incredibly hot. So I don't know if I will be um, doing uh, leather in Austin in the summer, but I don't know when I'm going back there. I definitely had a good enough time at the Sunset Club, which is Brian Redband's comedy club. You can literally walk 50 or about probably uh, 150 feet left when you perform there, right to the mothership. And the mothership was an awesome experience. Like I said in the stream where I covered that trip, I loved. Um, that they lock your phone so no audience member is uh, Instagramming or on Twitter or messaging someone. You have to listen to the show. 
you know, and it's a better experience for the comic. Like, I, I don't think I've ever had a more engaged audience in my life. In 25 years of comedy, like, every single person, and I'm sure not every single person liked me, but, um, you know, they were listening to me. Uh, the Rogan Bar's Mitzi's, which is downstairs, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, before the comedy store, it was Ciro's, and I believe before Ciro's, it was something else. Uh, no, I mean, Tim Dillon's, I don't know, got a regular voice to me. Um, so I had a good time. I mean, the comics, all the door guys are really super funny and girls. All the door people are, are very, very funny comics. Um, and then the lineup, uh, CJ Landry, David Jolly, uh, Matt Edgar, comedy store guy, you know, myself and then the legend of brian holtzman it was like a great great experience and i got to see a lot of people i hadn't seen you know like henchcliffe and um, red band and, and a couple of la comics that you guys probably wouldn't know but it was kind of neat for me to uh rekindle the uh the la friendships in austin and uh you know next day a lot of people recognized me uh from the uh, mothership so that was fun even on the airplane um you know people are like hey we saw you last night and you know all that stuff so yeah i mean danish and o'neill were next level you really missed out watching them host potluck it was you know people think roast battle was mean-spirited or like aggressive humor like if they didn't like you 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 got effed with Um, you know, it was, uh, let's just say an aggressive form of humor. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully their, uh, partnership reunites, but, uh, you know, I don't get into that drama. So, um, of course, O'Neill is helping me with my special with the great documentary maker, Pistol Pete Lazarus. So I'm excited. Hopefully by summer that comes out. You know, it's a little harder to do it all on your own. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there was, you know, the dark era of the comedy stores, probably from like 2000 to really right around Tommy got fired. And then uh, when Roast Battle started, I mean, uh, you know, Roast Battle was really the first must-see show at the comedy store. Um you know, it was just like the perfect storm of Rogan and Diaz coming back. Roast battle was happening. And then, you know, for those next five years, it was awesome. I mean, it was like a concert. Um, so, yeah, I don't. I think Sting and Taker's done. I don't want to see that shit. Um, you know, two guys in their 60s who can barely move. You can't do a solo match. You know, the, the time to do it was probably... Probably even a few years before Sting came into WWE, you know, when he was in TNA and he was good in TNA. Like his TNA career never really gets talked about, but Sting was good. But he was there for 13 years. So you think if he would have gone to WWE around 2005, just for the Taker match, that's when you should have done it. Um, I mean, I saw Taker, I think, at WrestleMania. I think he faced Angle in like 2002 or something like that. He could barely fucking walk, and that's 22 years ago. So can you imagine, like, when the cameras are around, how he moves around? Uh, I only met Mitzi once, to be honest with you. And, um, you know, she was declining at that point, so I unfortunately didn't get to meet the prime Mitzi. Um, so... Um, Yes, the dark side of uh, dark. Well, it's funny. Me and my ex pitched a show called Dark Side of Comedy to Vice. Hmm. Uh, uh, I I don't really wear either. Uh, I wear Jordan slides, I guess. I mean, you know, it's just the time for Taker and Sting was probably twenty years ago. Maybe when maybe when WCW first got bought by WWE, but uh, I don't think Sting 
um, really wanted to go to WWE at that time, you know, because I think the attitude era kind of scared him. He's like, I don't want to be in an angle with Sable showing her jugs or something like but I do wish, you know, it's like Goldberg and Undertaker happened too late. Um, well, uh, I mean, I believe, well, you know, I believe the rumor uh, Dr. Nova was either uh, Holtzman or Jimmy Schubert. But since I like my spots at the comedy store, I'll just leave it at that. You'll have to do your own research on that. I did not know that quadruple A. Yes. What up? What up? Well, I don't know, Dr. Nova. You know, I believe that was the rumor. Um, well, I mean, Goldberg was not known to be a safe wrestler, to be honest with you. So, um, you know, but that, that match happened. You know, Goldberg, Undertaker... Uh, happened in 2000 when, when did wcw get bought out 2001 something in that area 2002 maybe um that's when the time for taker to have goldberg and sting uh, wrestle but i, I don't want to see that but, you know i mean sting i don't think sting has had a singles match in a long time you know because he can't he, i mean fuck he's 64 man uh, i mean i'm 55 and i fucking and I'm in great shape for a 55 year old, and I hurt. Uh, so I can imagine what you know Sting feels like after 40 years of wrestling and bodybuilding. And I mean, bodybuilding and, and all that shit he was doing, like right, when he broke into the business with the Warrior, that's murder on your joints. You know, when you're bench pressing three to five, six hundred pounds, man, that's so much stress on your arms and shoulders. Um, so. You know, I I think wrestlers really decline around 40. If, if they've been doing it since, like, say, 15. Um, you know, I mean, look at Hogan. I mean, he has fucking two hip replacements, a bad back. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't dislike Bret Hart. I got to meet him at the Ric Flair Rose. He's a nice dude. Kind of serious. But, uh, you know, saying that you're the best there ever was and all that. you know bro it's like you won because the writers had you win sam sheik wait i can't see because i don't know who sam sheik is Sam, i don't know who sam sulek is so i don't know well i mean it's like you saw when uh um Dan Henderson, um, he was on TRT. I think he was about 47, and he, he was fucking jacked. And then when he went off it, uh, same with Vitor Belfort. Uh, you know, they look, I mean, Belfort especially, he looked like a deflated tire. Um, well, I mean, and your body's so fucked up. I mean, you know, when you start all the roids like D ball and Anavar and, and testosterone and all that shit, you take it long enough especially with testosterone, your body stops making it. So then you rely on the artificial testosterone and that, you know, it's just not meant for your body, you know, long-term. I mean, the, you know, cycle or two probably doesn't hurt you, enhances what you have. But, you know, it's like dick pills are the same thing. If you constantly take dick pills, then your, your, your dick literally doesn't know how to get hard anymore on its own. So you have to take the dick pills to get a boner. You know, same, you know, with Cialis, Viagra, Rhino. Um, yeah, I mean, he just wasn't. I mean, he was a, a Goldberg was a football player. He didn't know about fucking wrestling. And he I don't think he knew his own strength. Like I remember at the Ric Flair roast, I was talking to Jay Lethal about Satnam Singh. And I was like, how strong is that guy? And I don't think Jay would mind me saying this. He's like, bro, he doesn't know his own strength. Um, you know, they like he, he was explaining to me uh, on a on a power bomb. You know, you pick up the person, you hold them, and then you drop them so they fall on their own. 
He's like sat him saying would pick up someone and then throw them. Like he he actually did a power bomb. And you could fucking break someone's neck or back doing that. I mean, you could break it even if you do it the right way, if you drop them too low or too high. And Satnam Singh's like a legit 7'4", 350 pounds, maybe 400 pounds. Although he looks a little skinnier now, it's like, Jesus Christ, man. You're going to kill someone, bro. Um, so do they make dick pill suppositories? What are you asking for a friend? I, who is Sam Sulek? I don't know who that is. Oh, oh, is that that guy, the Russian dude with the huge arms? Yeah, I mean, Bret Hart's a very serious dude. You know, you can tell he's fucked up. Like, you know, your dad's uh, Stu Hart, and you're practicing in that fucking dungeon probably since the age of 10, and where's Bret Hart in the 60s? I mean, that's he probably had CTE before they even know what it was. So, um Oh, okay, because there's that one Russian kid who has like the, like, I think they're like 30 inch arms. Let me look up Sam Sulek. See, I don't, uh, oh yeah, I remember Rich Plano. He, he, I met him once uh, somewhere. He's a, he's a pretty big dude. Uh, Sam. All right, let's see uh, images of Sammy Sulek. I mean, Jesus, he's uh, he's only twenty. Uh, I mean, he he looks. I mean, he's clearly. I mean, this guy's only twenty years old. Jesus, he does not look very healthy. I mean. Uh, I mean, it looks like he might have chest implants. Okay. I mean, if I had to guess what he's on, I mean, I don't see any acne, so he's not on any oil-based steroids. I mean, that's not the greatest picture, to be honest with you. Um, I mean... He's got a nice back. It kind of got the Dorian Yates. He's pretty ripped. Uh, wow, he is pretty young. Um, I mean, I don't see any acne, though. He's definitely shredded. You know, I mean, it, it's like I don't um, find that look appealing. But he probably would look at me and go, you, you don't look like you work out at all, you piece of shit. So, uh, well, I mean, I think there's that uh, documentary on Ronnie Coleman. He didn't look too good in that documentary. I mean, people don't understand, you know, when you're taking steroids, you're, you're, you're literally causing your structural, your internal structural system to, to grow. Like, it's just not meant to be. You know, and that's why a lot of those guys, you know, end up cripple or, I mean, look at Schwarzenegger. Like, I mean, he still looks pretty good, but, you know, he's got, um, you know, he had heart and liver issues. Uh, who gets more women or all comics or pro wrestlers? It's probably pretty even. Um, just because, especially when you go to like small towns, you know, like you're a rock star to these people, even if they don't know you. Like even in Austin, and I didn't do anything with anyone there. Um, you know, you could tell that women were intrigued by me because here I am in all leather pants and uh, all that. Oh, wait, Pam, I am in the house. Welcome to Boss Hog. Thank you, Pam, as always. Say hello to St. Ranger for me if you can. 
Uh, Jim Cornette was not at the Ric Flair roast. Uh, Sting was supposed to be there, but he probably got wind of some of the jokes. And uh, I'll do a video. I think Dolph Ziggler was supposed to be there, and, and uh, he wasn't there. Um, I think the Million Dollar Man was supposed to be there, but uh, he probably didn't want to run into Virgil. Um, the only Jim Cornette um, story I have is I was on the, uh, as you guys know, or maybe you don't know, I was a uh, co-host of Roddy Piper's podcast for a you know about a maybe about a year until he died. And one time we're interviewing uh, Jim Cornette, and um, it was a phone interview. And Roddy was so nice; he would always introduce me to the guests, like you know, because no one knew who I was. And uh, he kept saying, "Earl's a comedian." Earl's a comedian, and Jim Cornette's like, I've heard his act. He's got a better chance of being a Canadian. <laughs> so, uh, nice guy, you know, and from the interview. That's my only experience with him. Um, oh, I mean, Anadrol, he's probably taking it before then, Tool Army. I mean, I knew a guy when I worked at a Family Fitness Center on Pico in Beverly Hills. It was the first job I ever had. Was a front desk guy. Here's a funny story. My first job, I was a fitness trainer at Family Fitness, which then became a 24-hour fitness. I think it's closed now. It's basically the gym all the Beverly Hills high kids went to. And my first day on the job, I told, go downstairs, your boss is down there. The guy who's going to train you. His, his name is Stanley. So I go down there, and Stanley's this gigantic black dude who's asleep on the life cycle. And it turns out it was Stanley Wilson, the football player, who got like kicked off the Super Bowl right the night before because he was on coke or something. He's a nice dude. It was kind of sad. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Jim Cornette gets it. You know, Jim Cornette likes being acknowledged for his great wrestling career. I mean, back then I was a trainer, and then I started uh, working the front desk because I, I thought, you know, it's easier to meet girls when you're just the first person they see at the gym. I did quite well for myself at that gym. I mean, Rich Plana was just, you know, the problem with that is, is there's, not that, there's not that many roles for guys who look like him. You know, like my first uh, agency, it was, what was it called? Sportscasting Plus. And Joe Kokowitz, Joe Kokowitz uh, was my agent. And it was all American. I don't know how I got in this agency, but it was all American gladiators and me and a couple football players like the Swede, Peter Koch from uh, Heartbreak uh, Ridge and... Uh, like a couple Oakland Raiders, uh, Steve something was Newski, I think, or no, it was an older, huge dude who played on the Raiders, but kind of a good looking guy with gray hair. I didn't really fit, you know, but I got the Pepsi and United Airlines commercials and the 38 special video voice of your heart or something like that. Oh shit. Peter chicken man, Brennan. Daddy man, did Eric Blake ever book you? I gotta be honest with you, chicken man. I don't know who Eric Blake is. So no, he did not book me. Speaking of booking, I'll be at the comedy store Saturday night. 12 15 on the button slick i'll be there and who knows when i'll be back at the mothership but i will be back it's funny dr nova you and the chicken man show up in the same streams that could be the greatest ploy ever two shadow accounts talking to each other because then it looks like hey It's not the same person. 
I'm just saying that you guys have a lot of the same references. A lot of the same open mic freakers. But that's all right. Yeah, I just saw that. The super. Now, do I like it or do you guys like it? Oh. That's all right. You know, I, I can't figure out the super chats. I'm just happy to get a few a stream. Um, I've played Doylestown, PA, but I, Teddy, I don't leave Los Angeles unless it pays very well, um, to be honest with you. And I am not, um, well known enough to to you know say play uh, not premium blend to play like helium in Philly or I mean the stand is always very gracious to me at, in New York but uh, you know I my Patreon or super chat money that's my voiceover stuff so I don't um, leave the home for comedy gigs to get on a plane unless it pays well and most gigs at my it's probably the wrong word at my fame level or whatever you want to call it. They just don't pay enough, you know, because I, you got to fly me out first class. You got to, you know, I'm not staying at the local yokel hotel and, you know, I'm not really in a position to make those demands. I mean, the flight to Austin was great. The flight coming back was really good. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I, I like flying. I love meeting people in the airport and the airplane. Um, so I don't, I don't mind. Most people don't like it. I like it, but you know, it's, it's a lot of, uh, you know, like even going to Austin last week, there's like a four to five hour uh, delay. So, you know, when I bought the plane ticket, it was like, it got in at Austin at three forty. But it was such a delay because right as we were about to take off from Los Angeles, for those of you who weren't listening uh, to my recap, the pilots went into overtime and the tower would not let them take off. So they literally had to back the plane up. We had to find two more pilots. That took two hours. It took about another hour for them to get all the paperwork. And, and I guess, you know, they were not familiar with the plane. So they, you know, had to like, I mean, they had flown the plane before, but they, they, you know, they had to, I don't know, get used to the plane. And then, so I got into Austin, literally, as Red Band Show was starting. So I went right from the airport to Red Band Show. So after the mothership and hanging out all night there, I was a tired puppy. I've never met Carrot Top. Yeah, I think I've seen that documentary, Quadruple A. I mean, he seemed like a nice guy. I mean, uh, but getting to my family fitness story, uh, I knew a guy named Will, Black Will, we called him. Um, and he was always trying to get me to go to Mexico with him to buy steroids. I'm like, dude, I don't take him. What the fuck would I go down there with you for? Because Will was taking uh, the steroids that they give bulls to make them bigger. And uh, I was like, I'm good, bro. Like, and he would take the same dosage they would give like an 800 pound bull. Um, and I, I, he just disappeared. So I'll, I'll just assume Will did not last very long on Mother Earth. Did you interact with any of the people you hated in Austin? Yeah, a couple. You know, uh, I mean, I, I don't hate people. I mean, except for maybe two people, but neither one of them was there. You know, I'm pretty much, hey, you treat me good, I treat you good. You want to roast me? You don't want to do that. Because I don't do you look like jokes. I take it to a personal level. So as long as it's true is my, um, my, uh, my creed. So, like, if you're roasting me and your girlfriend's in the room and I know you cheated on her, I'm going to say something about it. If it's true. If I have, like, 100% confirmation. Um, if I know uh, that, you know, you're, like, busting my chops from my leather pants and you're, I know you're gay, but you're in the closet, I'm going to expose you. 
Like I'm a I'm a madman. As long as it's true, because I think uh, the truth is the greatest roast material you can go after. You know, if you're not a funny comic, I'm gonna I'm gonna say hey, I just saw you bomb last week in L.A. Mm -mm, you're not roasting me, bitch. Uh, no, I don't think Bushman liked to party on uh, the Venice Beach Boardwalk. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I, I didn't trust Will. I'm sure he didn't have a car. I, if I recall, he didn't have a car. Uh, yes, Holtzman's show is, uh, I think it's right now. Uh, I think it starts literally at 10 o'clock at the mothership. I did not uh, get that, um, recipe. Yeah, I mean, Rich Plano was really ahead of the influencer the fitness influencer uh i believe michael hearn maybe was uh with him he's pretty big dude um you know with the videos of him working out i mean there's definitely a market for sure and uh you know it's just you know i mean rich plano like you can't like he he was doing basically what will was doing just taking crazy amounts like you know i i think that steroids i think you can take them and do i'm i'm certainly not a doctor so please nobody listen to me but you know i don't think steroids are that bad for you but most people are are like hey if 10 cc's of anavar helps 20 is better um i don't know what the five percent brand means uh ross welcome back kip smith Oh, 100%. I have, Teddy. I was roast battling someone in, uh, in the belly room. Now, this is right before roast battle blew up. And, you know, there's was, was no holes barred in that room. I mean, there was, like, homophobic stuff, racist stuff. I mean, it was wackadoony. And this guy did a joke about me being Jewish. Uh, and I, I said, I don't remember exactly what I said. But I'm like, well, I may cheat on my taxes, but you cheated on your girlfriend last week in the belly room. Oh, oops. Did I just say that? Uh, and I felt bad because I made the girlfriend cry. I mean, she didn't sign up for that. But, like, you know what? You, you want to play hardball with daddy? I, as long as it's true. Now, I had someone say a joke about me cheating on my girlfriend at the time that was not true. Uh, in 2017, the girl still hasn't talked to me. And was so pissed was telling people I hit her. So, and you know, so that's, um, you know, I mean, I'm not a great joke writer, but in terms of roast battle, I'm very quick. And I also know that what the jokes are going to be about me, you know, at least I have a blueprint um, of, you know, you're going to call me old. You're going to have a Kennedy joke. You're going to have, uh, you know, I date, I don't date younger girls because I want to. It's just, that's all I'm around. So you're gonna have a joke about me and young girls and and all that stuff. Uh, so you know the the old jokes were the easiest because you know everyone I battle I'm gonna outlive. So it wasn't really that hard. Hold on, hold on, Th Pam. I am five dollars. This is for Saint Ranger, 1959. I'm looking forward to him coming back home. I'm learning a lot about the wrestling business. <laughs> Thank you, Pam. I mean, the wrestling business is uh, a great business. Uh, yeah, you're right, Dr. Nova. That's why I don't have to uh, panhandle for Super Chats. I appreciate them. It's nice to be paid for your time. And, and let's thank the people who have donated or tipped tonight, as William Zoom would said. Pam I Am, and the legendary Peter Chicken Man Brennan. I said from day one of this channel being monetized, I'm not going to ask you guys for money. I'm not going to say, well, listen, I'm only going to do an hour stream, but if you guys give me money, I'll do two hours. We are going to 8.30, so we have 22 minutes. I don't care if everyone super chats me right now. We are stopping the stream at 8.30. Because I want you guys to want more. 
I mean, I listen to some streams. It's like this could this is easily an hour too long, but you do it because you know people are super chatting. You know, so I get it. Well, yeah, because you know it's it's like anything. I mean, you know, the fitness industry is is very cutthroat. It's probably right up there with comedy and wrestling. You know, like you literally get, you know, especially like Mr. Olympia, people are size freaks. You know, they want to see a Dorian Yates. They want to see a Lee Haney, a Schwarzenegger, a Dave Draper, a Tom Platts. Um, you know, they didn't want, you know, that's why Bob Paris never, Bob Paris probably had the greatest body on planet Earth. So Frank Zane, symmetrical. They, they were big guys, but they weren't like super huge and they never won. Uh, I, I, at least Bob Paris and Zane might have won one Mr. Olympia if I'm not. Um, mistaken but you know bob paris was like the most symmetrical body in the history of bodybuilding but he wasn't like 300 like he wasn't like dorian yates or lee haney um but you know i think like someone like rich plana like he doesn't want to be mr olympia he just wants to be a circus freak um and he was but then he's dead now um you know you you, you know it's like i said a couple minutes ago you literally you know, if 10 cc's of Anavar and 5 cc's of Deco makes me look pretty good, well, how about 20 cc's of Anavar and 15 uh, of uh, Deca? And I'll take some Winstrol. Just what the hell? That's not going to hurt. And then you're fucking dead. Yeah, Jay Cutler. I mean, Bob Paris did not look anything like Jay Cutler, but Jay Cutler won Olympias. Um, yeah, I mean, people don't want to see, uh, you know, like a guy like Frank Zane or, you know, um, Paris, or I'm trying to think who else. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think a guy. I mean, there's a black bodybuilder, Mike something, I forget his name. And he was in the late 80s, early 90s. And he would always finish like between 15th and 20th. And he was really like, he was like a black Bob Paris. And I asked my friend at Gold's Gym once, hey, how come he doesn't do better? Like, I see him in here like working out for like seven hours a day. And this guy was competing in the Mr. Olympia completely natural, never had done a steroid. And that's when I bought followers for my podcast or downloads. Because, I, you know, my first probably 200 episodes, I, you know, I did it straight. And, like, and then I had a um, fucking A-list publicist go, dude, everyone does it if you want to get in the top. 50 of uh, iTunes comedy at the time, you got to buy followers. You know, you're not going to get someone from Metallica on your podcast if you have like an organic 800 listeners or downloads, you know. And I'm like, well, ballpark and how many, how many people cheat on their numbers in uh, iTunes comedy? It's like 70. And I'm like, 70 out of the top 200 is like 70%. So I felt like that black guy in the Mr. Olympia. I was just like, fuck it. And then I got caught. That's all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that's the thing with Plana. Uh, I don't know who... Uh, I mean, Bob Paris is my favorite bodybuilder of all time in terms of the total body. Uh, Tom Platts, I love just because, you know, Quadzilla. And my legs were gigantic in the late 80s, early 90s. So I was called at Family Fitness Center, Baby Platts. Um, well, you know... I got busted, but you know, I'm not saying I would do it again, but you know, given the information I was given, I don't regret it. If 70% of the people are doing it, fuck it. Um, well, but this guy was Jay. My, he was a black dude, had a mustache. Uh, I'll never remember his name. Um, but like he literally, I, I would see him at Gold's Gym literally working out six to eight hours a day. And I mean, hard. And he, he was literally a black Bob Paris. And uh, just he never finished uh, above or below, I guess you could say, 15. Um, well, I mean, I think, you know, like for a podcast, like, you know, I had a good run. Like I was getting like funny guests, like the bad guy from Superman 2 and shit like that. But then... I just, the numbers weren't there. And like, you know, I'm like all my other uh, social media, like my Instagram, what am I on Instagram right now? 
me get these pictures of uh, Sam Sulek off my screen. Um, there's a thing you can go on called Social Blade that uh, you know tells you like what percentage of followers you have that are real. Like I have eleven thousand eight hundred followers on Instagram. I think it's ninety six percent of them are real. You know, a couple bots get in. You know, they just get in on the uh, wayside. And then on uh, Twitter, I have about the same, ironically enough, uh, 11,900. And, uh, you know, I, I think it was 94% of my followers on Twitter are real. So, um, you know, that is, uh, um, you know, pretty legit. I mean, you're always going to have a bot or two kind of um, get in there, uh, you know, just get through the wayside. I mean, I get a lot of like, let me look at my last uh, group of, uh, like I can tell already some of the people who just followed me on Instagram and I don't follow them back. Uh, like Rob Roy 1000 has got two followers. So that's probably a bot. Um, and then this Indian dude, uh, Pima, I don't even know how to say that name. Uh, four posts, 10 followers, 194 following. So he's probably a bot. So I just won't follow them back. Um, I learned my lesson. But, uh, you know, like my newest follower is uh, MW3TV TikTok. Uh, let's just go on their page. Eight posts, 6,900 followers, 4,000 following. So he's probably a bot. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, you know that's, that's not that bad. 6% of my followers on Instagram are uh, fake. I mean, you're never going to have 100%. But, uh, you know, I don't regret doing it because my, the, this publicist guy, and I met him at a big celebrity party. He's like, I really love your podcast. You get some weird guests like the singer from rat and, and the, you know, the, the guitar player from Warren. I mean, that's funny. And you're a really good interviewer, but if you want to get say Bruce Springsteen or someone from Metallica, they're not going to go on a podcast that has 800 listeners or downloads that, you know, they're going to want to, you know. First thing, any publicist, you, know, you got to go through a publicist to get like a Springsteen or a, someone from Metallica or Kiss, let's say. They're going to look at your numbers. And they, you know, so uh, I think Bot is way before the dabble burst, to be honest with you, ACDC. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't think I have any uh, fake comments on either site. Um, so Kevin Rook or Dan Madonia. Well, I just did comedy with Dan Madonia in Austin. So I didn't know Kevin Rook. Uh, well, I think there's different, you know, you can go on Fiverr now and, and I use some more legit, but Fiverr, you can, you know, and you're paying someone in Bangladesh to, uh, basically give you fake listens, but I do believe you can for more money by fake comments and whatnot. Now I'll be completely honest with you. My first review on iTunes for my podcast that is still up was me under the name Hank Weldon, which was Bruce McGill's character in Miami Vice, uh, where the buses run or out where the buses run. Um, so uh, we, we don't talk about Dean Del Rey in this stream. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I think bot, I mean, MySpace had bots. I mean, MySpace was really where people learned to buy followers and, and whatnot. I mean, I knew a guy who had 50,000 followers on MySpace and he, uh, certainly he was just like a guy who, pardon my language, dabbled in com comedy. He did not have 50,000 fans. But he was a rich dude who knew someone who knew someone who knew, you know, this, I think this was even before Fiverr. So, um, well, yeah, I mean, and my YouTube channel is very legit. I think, let me look, uh, my YouTube channel. Um, 
And people have told me, hey, dude, you should buy followers for your YouTube channel. Now, you know, I learned my lesson. I have, uh, let's see, uh, I think you can go on uh, YouTube Studio is a more accurate. Um, so I right now I have 2,304 subscribers. It's not the most amount, to be fucking frank. Um, but, you know, it, it's 2,304. I, I would guess... Uh, <laughs> you know 90 to 95 percent are real you know i'm sure there's uh you know five percent that have uh you know are bots or whatever but i i don't believe i have many um or any fake comments or stuff so that makes me feel good um and you know i don't think i've ever seen a fake bot in stream i have watched some streams where there seems to be like a bot that's spamming but uh i don't get that uh oh it's all good acdc um and i know you can buy someone said you can buy fake super chats but i don't want to do that you know you know i i, I even though i you know I hate it when people say, would you do it again if you knew now? If you knew then what you know now. And that's like an impossible, you know, you never know now. You never know then what you know now. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't do it again, but I don't regret doing it. Uh, hello, Greg. Hello. Always a pleasure. I don't think many of my, uh, you know, one X might be a lurker. I, you know, I know, uh, I won't say who, but I know that they have some burner accounts, mainly on Instagram. But, uh, you know, listen, I've never said a bad word about that particular girl. So, you know, I don't really talk bad about exes because it's just, it never makes you look good. And it never makes you feel good, to be honest with you. You might feel good the second you're saying it. But then afterwards, you either, ah, I still miss him if I'm that pissed. So, uh, Dr. Nova, I, I'm, I'm a straight, I'm straight edge. So, uh, unless you have double D tits, no, you may not. Um, but I mean, I, I've heard that fake super chats, you can do that. And I guess the idea would be you do a fake $100 super chat so you could get people super chatting you like five bucks because they feel bad or whatever. Uh, I don't speak about Jeff. If it's the Jeff, I think you're there. I mean, he doesn't turn down any gigs. Um, trust me on that one. Uh, okay. Well, I'm I'm a straight edge, Doctor Nova. So I'm sorry about that. But you're uh, barking up the wrong tree here. But I'm not against being a man who likes men. Um, I just, you know, I like boobies and the vagina. Sorry to talk like that, Pam. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you could tell, like, like you could look at my stream and my numbers add up. I mean, for someone with only 2,300 subs, uh, you know, to have 30 or so people in a stream, it checks out. Uh, Jeff Garcia from Jimmy Neutron. Uh, I'll talk about Jeff Garcia. I just won't talk about the other Jeff. And I don't mean Garland. His... Last name rhymes with boss. Um, but you did you definitely see some streams, you know, of unknown comics that have like 50,000 subs. It's like, wait, that's just not possible. Like knowing how the system works now, uh, you know, or you have, you know, on Twitter, you can really like I have a friend of mine who has like a hundred thousand followers on Twitter, but each tweet gets like three likes. So clearly a lot of his followers are, are bots or whatever, fake accounts. Um, I don't know much about Jeff Garland. I've never really worked with him. Um, and I, you know, I used to listen to Steel Toe a lot, but I just I just don't anymore. I don't I mean I listen to MLC if someone's on, I know. Um yeah, Rick Ingram's a great comic. You know, but that's this business, though. You know, I, I mean 
it's just the way it is. You know, there's I, the funniest people I know, probably none of you have heard of. Like if I booked the late night talk show, the comedy portion, I'd book all these friends I know that are so fucking funny, but they don't have a large social media or they're just socially inept. So they don't network and, and you know, shuck and jive like you have to. And uh, by the way, we got six minutes in the stream. So before I forget, we're ending at 830 Pacific Standard Time. Let's thank the tippers for tonight. Pam, I am and Kevin. Uh, Brennan's brother, Peter Chicken Man Brennan. Thank you very much, you kids. I appreciate it as always. Um, well, I mean, I think Jeff is huge in the uh, Hispanic rooms, you know. So I think obviously Jeff is not a bigger comic than Bobby Lee, but he he does all right. Yeah, I, I mean, funny has nothing to do with it to me i mean if it was about being funny i'd be much more famous than i am um uh, like i'm fucking funny you, you know but i'm also in the worst category you can be in older white normal looking dude like i'm not like super attractive but i'm not a complete fucking gargoyle either so you either have to do your own thing like you know kill tony roast battle um or you you just keep doing comedy for the love of the game and and you um, you know hope that that works out. Uh, Teddy, give us a name. Jason Galern, one of the funniest people I know. I guarantee you, probably no one in this stream is heard of. Um, uh, so we've got five minutes. Five minutes to do what you do. Uh, you can ask a question. You can super chat. You can not. You can. Uh, I don't know, do whatever. Uh, yeah, a straight, white, older male. It's like literally I would rather be any category. So that's when I say, when I see when women complain about, you know, their uh, genre in the comedy world, I, I don't feel sorry for them at all. You know, try being a straight, white, older male. It's just like, you know, people want, you know, I had a friend of mine, James O'Sullivan, I don't believe you are, uh, I believe you are new to this, James O'Sullivan. So what happens is when someone super chats me, I give them the ray gun. James O'Sullivan, $1.99. Hey, buddy, I'm in the Earl verse deep in it, bro. Thank you. I'm glad you are deep in it. Pam, I am gifting five Earl Skakel memberships. But so everyone, thank Pam, I am if you got a free membership. Hello. And the, to be a man true to my word, I'm stopping in four minutes. I'm not going to just keep going to bilk you guys of your money. I don't do that shit. Because I'm appreciative of you guys being fans. I just don't look at you as a dollar sign. Now, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the Super Chats. Uh, but let me thank all the people who have done that. The tippers, I like to call them. Pam I Am, Peter Chicken Man, Brennan, Pam I Am, James O'Sullivan, and Pam I Am. Pam I Am, uh, you know, uh, this shows you my business since. Uh, thank you. It's unnecessary, but thank you. Well, I, I don't know what you mean by that tool army. Uh, well, you know, I'm working on a better background right now. Um, I, I Well, I would hope. Yeah, Steve Stevens sent me that for free after my dog Lois um, chewed the other one. I don't want to take the time to look. We're on the clock. We got two more minutes. Uh, ACDC 5150. Uh Happy belated St. Patty's Day, Earl. Adeline Diamond, twenty dollars. Go buy yourself something pretty, Earl. Are you new to the stream, Adeline? Adeline Demones. Hello. 
But I'm a man of my word. We got two more minutes. Now, you think Super Chats seem to be picking up right now. Hey, I should do another half hour. Build my fans out of some money. I'm ending in two minutes. And that's not to say, well, give me money in the next two minutes. Just listen. Retweet this if you like it. Subscribe. Hit the like button. There's many ways to um, contribute to this stream. We are the little stream that could. One day, do I hope to have a 1,000 people in here? I absolutely do. I'm a man of my word, Jay Santos. Because don't get me wrong, I appreciate the late arriving super chats, but then, I, then I'm like all the other people who just sit there and do another half hour. Just give, give me some more money and I'll keep going. I don't do that to you guys. Uh, no, no, I'm a, I'm a Madden guy, Teddy. I'm a Madden guy. So uh, we got about 30 seconds, guys. So if you've got a quick question, ask. If not, I'll be online again tomorrow, probably about the same time. You know, 30 people in the stream is pretty good for me. I do keep my word. You know, I don't, uh, you know, and I think that's why the, the, the dabble world is imploding because James O'Sullivan, $1.99, that might be the last super chat of the night. You hard sell on it, so not tipping. Black bilk, baby. I, yeah, I can't do that, James O'Sullivan. Yes. Hit the like button, babies. It's free. All right, that was the last Super Chat because it is 8.30. So I will say my goodbyes. And uh, I, uh, guys, uh, let me thank the Super Chat, the tippers, uh, one last time. Because I like when people give. I like for them to feel like, oh, Earl appreciates it. Pam I Am, Peter Chicken Man Brennan, Pam I Am, James O'Sullivan, Pam I Am. ACDC 5150, Adeline Demond, uh, $20. Thank you so much, James O'Sullivan. Um, it is 8.30 now, so I'm just saying my goodbyes. I just don't want to hit end stream. Uh, we'll get. We'll talk about Dan Schneider tomorrow night. Creepy Mo, I love you. Uh, but yeah, let's do that tomorrow night. We'll talk about Dan Schneider. I might watch the uh, Stormy Daniels documentary tonight. Uh, quite on set as I believe the Nickelodeon um, documentary about Dan Schneider being a fucking another predator in this business. I'm already going against my word. It's 831. The stream is over. I love you all. I'm going to do the stream tomorrow night, probably a little earlier, maybe about maybe about 630. So I hit the notification button for you guys uh, so you know I go on and I uh, appreciate it. And I love you all. Earl Skakel, over and out.